All right. Hi, everyone. Happy Monday. This is Chelsea with Scott Leroy Marketing. Mm -hmm. So today is our command overview class. So in this class today, our goal is to give you a brief understanding and overview of the command system. So I am going to uh, be briefly reviewing everything um, that we have within the command system for you to understand. So that being said, there is a lot more to the system that I'm not going to go into details with today. So if you do want more information on command, you can go to our YouTube page, Scott Leroy Marketing on YouTube, and you can type in any topic that you are looking for, and you can find more detailed videos as well. So we do have our chat box today. So if you come up with any questions uh, during our class, feel free to put them in the chat box, and I will do my best to get back to those at the end of class today. All right, I think that's everything. So let's go ahead and get started. So as you can see here, my command login screen, you can get there by going to agent.kw.com. Once you get here, you're going to put in your username and your password. The username is not case sensitive, however your password is. So just keep in mind that if you have any capital letters, that those are in your password. Otherwise, you might have some issues signing in. You can also click on the eyeball button right here. If you click on that, it is going to show you what these characters are so you can make any adjustments to your password to get access as well. And then one last thing is just to keep in mind that there's no spaces either before or after the password because that can cause issues signing in as well. Once you are all set with that, you'll go ahead and click sign in and it is going to bring you to your command dashboard. So this is the command dashboard. If your screen is looking a little differently, that is okay. Um, you do have the ability to customize your widgets and I'm gonna show you how you can do that in just a second. So the first thing that we're going to do here is go over all of the available widgets that we can have on our dashboard. So the first thing you see here are tasks. This is going to tell you all of your past due and upcoming tasks. You do also have the ability to create tasks with this button right here, right from your dashboard. Next, we have recent leads. So any leads that are coming in, it is going to put them on the list here. You can see their name, the source of where the lead came from, and then the time of when that lead came in. Scrolling down, we have our goals. So here is where you are able to see your goal setting if that's something that you have set up. Next, we have events in our Market Center. So this section is going to provide you all of the upcoming events for your particular Market Center, as well as provide a list of the preferred partners of your Market Center. Keep in mind that if you are part of multiple market centers, you will have a drop down here that you can click on and you can choose the, uh, the market center that you are looking to get information on. Next, we have our database health. So here is where you're able to see how you're doing with your database in terms of the information that you have put into your system. This is also going to compare you to other agents in your market center as well. Next, we have a notepad. So if you need to write down any notes, you can do so here. Next, we have profit share. So you can check out all of your profit share information. And lastly, we have product updates. So this is where you're able to check out anything that is up and coming in terms of KWRI updates for products. So we are gonna scroll back up to the top. Towards the right-hand side, you're going to see a customize button. So if you go ahead and click on that, it is going to open up the ability on the left-hand side for you to see all of the available widgets that you can add to your dashboard. If there's anything that you'd like to remove from your view, you can just go ahead and click on the check mark and you'll see that it removes the check mark, meaning it removes it from your view. 
Next, we have the Arrange Widgets section. So this is where you're able to reorder your widgets. And you can do that by just clicking on a box and then you'll drag and drop with your mouse. So when you are all set with that, you'll go ahead and click Apply. And then you'll see that the update automatically takes. So now we're going to go towards the top left hand side of our dashboard. You're going to see that we have three tabs at the top. The first one is command. That's going to bring us into our command profile. Next is connect. That's going to bring us to our connect profile or kwconnect.com. And then our third is command MC. So this tab is only going to be in view if you are part of Market Center staff. So if that does not apply to you uh, and you do not have this tab, then that is normal. So just keep that in mind. Uh, Command MC, very briefly, for those of you that this does pertain to, this is where you can go into the back end of command. You can see the agents in your market center, the recruits, the opportunities, et cetera. So all of that back end information for your market center. Moving over to the right hand side, we have a few icons here. So the first one is our storefront icon. If you hover over it, it's going to tell you that it is the marketplace. The marketplace is where you can go in and you can set up third-party integrations with command so that they those integrations are connected to your command profile. So a really good example that is popular is Twilio. If you are looking to be able to text uh, via command, you would go into the marketplace to set up that Twilio subscription. Next, we have the bell icon. This is our notifications bell. You can tell if there is a notification by this red dot that you see here, followed by a number next to it indicating how many notifications you currently have that are unread. So if we click on our notifications button, it is going to show you all of your unread or your read notifications. And then you can also filter your notifications by clicking on the all notifications button right here. And then you can filter out the notifications based off of all of these various topics. Next, we have our name. So I'm going to come back to this in just a second. The last icon that we have in the top right corner is our question mark, which is our help and information. This is going to provide guided tours, Keller Williams University, which is educational resources, you can chat with support, and you can post an idea. So going back to our name, you should see your headshot and your name right here. If you click on the drop down, you're going to see quite a few options. The first thing I want to point out here is that if you are part of a team, you are going to see two separate profiles here. How you can tell which one is which is your personal profile will have your name and personal underneath, whereas your team profile is going to have the team name and your role on the team underneath. In order to switch between the two, you're just going to click on the the uh, account that is under other accounts, you'll see that it highlights it. And if you click on it, it will bring you into the other profile. How you can tell which profile you're currently in is whichever one is showing up on top right here, that is indicating which profile you are currently under. So as we go down, we have our referrals profile. We have my profile, settings, command training, and our logout button. So we're going to come back up to my profile. Once we are in my profile, it's going to bring you to your about me. This is all of the public facing information that is about you that is going to go on to the KW website. If we go over to the right hand side, you're going to see it says display my profile on kw.com and you have the option to choose either yes or no. So based off of if you want your information public, you can make that choice with this toggle button right here. 
in looking at our about me information, you'll see that it's pretty straightforward in terms of the information that it is asking for. If there's anything that you need to edit, you have your edit button in the top right corner. The only thing that you are not able to edit in this section is going to be your real estate license. So you'll see it's under this line right here. In order to make any updates or any changes to this, it will have to go to your market center staff to do it on the back end. So just keep that in mind if you're seeing any discrepancies with your real estate license. Then below that, we have contact information. So this is the phone number that will be public. So keep that in mind that you will want this, or sorry, you will, you do have to know that this is going to be a public phone number. So if you need to edit that, you can do that in the top right corner again. Just know that this is a public number. Um, so you want to make sure that that is the correct number. Going back over to the left-hand side, we're going to click on My KW. When you do that, it's going to open up your system information. So this is going to be all of the internal information about you that you set up when you were setting up your Keller Williams profile. This is where you're able to manage your login credentials, your KW email. You can see all of your personal information, your beneficiary, profit share, and your sponsor information. So any of that internal information, uh, you're just going to come into this section under My KW. And then just remember that our edit, sorry, our edit button, <laughs> if you need to make any edits, is going to be in the top right corner. So going back over to the left-hand side, the last thing we're going to talk about is my affiliations. This is going to tell you which market centers you are connected to within the command profile. So you can see all of your market centers here. If you click on them, it will tell you your role and your start date for that market center. We're going to go back to command home and we're going to click on that to go back to our dashboard. This is going to bring us back to our home page. And now let's go back up to our name in the top right corner. This time we are going to click on settings. So this is going to bring you to your integrations page. This is showing you all of the applications that you are able to connect through command. So on the left hand side, you're going to see the application name. In the middle column, it's going to tell you the status of whether it is connected or not. And on the right-hand side, you have the option to manage the connection. So this is how you're going to make sure that you are getting connected. So you're going to see Dot Loop, DocuSign, Facebook. We have Instagram, Twitter, Gmail. Once we get towards the bottom, under email services, I always like to point this out. So let's go all the way to the right-hand side and we're gonna click on Manage. When we do that, this is allowing you to update the information that is shown when you send out command emails or, or email campaigns through command. So the reason that I like to point this out is when you go to send out an email campaign, it's going to send out from a agent with a whole bunch of numbers, random email address. Um, so when you come into command or sorry, to manage your command email, you have the option to update the sender name and the reply to email. So now this is the information that the contacts are going to see. You do also have your monthly account usage below. So it's going to keep track of the emails that you have sent out. You do get 5,000 available emails per month. So if you do hit that amount, it will then redirect you to the marketplace to manage your subscription. Let's click out of here. So over on the left-hand side, you're gonna see that we have quite a few different settings options. A lot of these are a little more advanced and in-depth, so I'm not gonna cover any of them other than our Connect settings for today. So if we click on Connect settings, we're gonna click on Marketing Profile, this is going to bring up your marketing profile, which is the information that is going to display on your personal KW website. So going over to, 
to the top right corner again, you're going to see use my information to brand my agent site and you have a toggle button again. So what this is indicating is you have the option of whether you want this information publicly displaying on your website or not. So you can determine what you want. If it is green, that means it's active. If it is gray, that means it is not active. So scrolling down, you have the option to put in your headshot and your team logo. If you are not on a team, we still highly recommend putting in either a standard KW logo, Market Center logo, or a personal logo in the team logo section. The reason being is because when you go to send out a email campaign, it automatically has two spaces for your logos. So if you don't have anything in team logo, it's going to show up as a broken image. So just keep that in mind when you're setting this up. Scrolling down, we have my details. So keep in mind that anything that has this red star next to it is indicating that it is required in order to save the profile. So just keep that in mind as you're going through. It's going to prompt you for the information. There's also a military affiliation section. So if you click on the drop down, you can choose from whichever option applies for you. Next, we have a biography section, and you will notice that this is required in order to save the profile. So if you do not have a biography right away that you are ready to put in, you can bypass this by putting in either a TBD or a few periods uh, just to be able to save the rest of the profile. Then we have phone numbers, emails, market center information, compliance information. So if you do have any specific compliance pieces that are required from your market center, definitely reach out and just make sure that you have the right information in here if we are not setting you up um, because every market center is a little different. You have a section for your social media links followed by your Google Analytics tracking ID. So now we're going to go back up. Let's hit the house button all the way at the top, which is bringing us back to our homepage. So now we are going to go through the command uh, profile. So before I go through all the widgets on the side, I know we've had a few people joining us since the beginning. So I just wanted to reiterate that this is our command overview class today. So I am very briefly going to be reviewing all of the different applets that are on the side here. So we have a ton of more detailed videos on our YouTube page. So you are more than welcome to go check out our YouTube page, Scott Leroy Marketing, and you can search for any of these applets where you will find a more detailed video. All right. So before we get into the applets, a little trick that I like to show is if you go up in the top left corner and click on the red KW box that you see here, you're going to see that it expands each of the applets for you to actually see what they are. So that's just a nice way of not having to um, memorize what the icons are. <laughs> All right, so the first icon that we have is our homepage. So anytime you want to get back to this page, you'll just click on this home button. Then we have contacts. This is where all of your contacts are stored. Your tasks are for your follow-up or your reminders. Smart plans is for all of your drip campaigns. Referrals is where you can find your referrals platform. Opportunities is where all of your transactions are. Campaigns is for your social media advertising, direct mailers, email campaigns, and paid ads. Reports is where you can set up your goal setting and see all of your reports. Designs is where you can create or find pre-made graphics for your marketing. Listings is where KWLS is pulling from your MLS. And then consumer are the settings for your consumer app and your website. So let's go back up to contacts. We're gonna click on that. So 
So this is going to bring us into our contact database. If you have not added anyone to your database yet, there's two ways to do so. Moving over to the right hand side, you have your import button. So if you click on this, this is how you are able to upload a spreadsheet so that you can bulk add contacts at one time. You do have your download template right here. So if you click on that, it will provide a template for you to put your contact information in. That way it syncs up correctly in the system. Then you'll just go ahead, upload the file, click continue and get that spreadsheet in your system for you. One thing that I do like to point out is that um, we are happy to do this for you. So if you would like to send us your contact spreadsheet, we can reformat and get that in your command system for you. Next, we have our add contact button. So if you click on this, this is how you are able to manually add contacts. So you can just put in any of the information that you have that applies. You can add a lead source. You can also add tags. And a tag is something that you connect to a contact that is going to group it together with another contact that shares a commonality. You can click on add more information and you'll see that there's quite a few more drop downs. So there's a ton of information that you are able to put in about contacts. Once you've added all of that information, you can click create, and then it's going to add it to your contact database. The last option that we have in the top right corner is going to be our other button. If we click on this, it's going to provide all of our export options. So you can either export all of your own contacts or you can export in various mailing labels. So moving over to the left-hand side, we have our search bar. And when you click in the search bar, you're going to see you have a few different ways that you can search by. And then as you start to type in a contact name, you'll see that it will update the database for anyone who fits the criteria that is in there. So it will actively update. Oops. Next, we have our filter button. So if you click on this, this is going to allow you to filter out your search based off of specific information. And then we have smart view as well. So um, a smart view is, if I click on this, you can create smart views by clicking on the create smart view button. And essentially what a smart view is, is saving a filtered list. So if there are, if there's a certain search parameter that you are frequently filtering out, you can just save that as a smart view. That way you can just click on the smart view to get to that list faster. So looking down, we have our database below. You're going to see that we have a dark header that's providing the different categories of information followed by the contact information below. So in our header, if there's anything that you see that is missing, you do have the ability to customize your columns. So you can click on the customize column button. Then on the left-hand side, it's going to show you all of the available columns that you can add to your database. So if you wanted to add anything, you would just click in the box to the left-hand side to get that check mark. Then on the right-hand side, you can rearrange the order. And again, you can do that by clicking and we're going to drag and drop. Oops, let's put it there. Once you're all set, you'll hit apply. And you're going to see that now primary address has been added to our database. So it's going to automatically update for you. You do have the option to update the look of your database as well. So right now we are in our list view, which is notated by this icon here. You do also have icon view. So if you click on that, you'll see that it's going to change your view. And again, this is totally just based off of your preference. So it doesn't matter either way. Next, we have a hyperlink. This is going to confirm how many contacts you have in your database. 
So if you click on the hyperlink, you have the option to change how many contacts you're viewing at one time. So if you have a larger database, you may want to be looking at 500 contacts at a time. So we're going to switch it to 10. That way you can see the different pages. So if you do have multiple pages that you need to scroll through, you can scroll by just using the arrow buttons to the right and to the left of the hyperlink. All right, and then the last thing we're gonna talk about in our contacts is the contact card. So if you click on the name of a contact, you're going to see it will open up a new page for their contact card. On the left-hand side is all of the information about that contact. And on the right-hand side is all of the activity for that contact. Next, we're gonna to go to tasks. So this is going to bring us to our task uh, database. As a reminder, this is our follow-up or reminders, and it can be for either contacts or for opportunities. So at the top, you're going to see we have three different lists. We have a to-do list, a completed list, and an archived list. You have your search bar again if you need to search for a particular task, and you have your filter option as well. How you can create a new task is by clicking on the Create New Task button in the top right corner. When you do that, you're going to enter the task name. You can link it to either a contact or an opportunity. And then you'll just put in the rest of that information for the task, click create, and it's going to add it to your to-do list. Once you have a task in your to-do list, you can go ahead and click on that task and it will open up the task details for you, as well as the contact information of who created the task and the contact notes. All right, next we're going to go to our smart plans. So this is our smart plans library. And if you're not familiar with what a smart plan is, it is a communications plan that you will set your contacts up on so that you are getting task reminders to reach out to them or they are being reached out on your behalf through command. So the first thing that I want to show you is our library. If we go to the second tab in, we're going to skip ahead and click on our library button. So this is going to bring you to the KW Public Library. This is all of the more common smart plans to get set up on. So these are a really great way for you to get started if you are new to smart plans. You can see all of the featured. It's going to tell you the name of the smart plan, a brief description. It's going to provide how many downloads and a rating, as well as the steps, the duration of the smart plan, and the total touches, meaning how many times a contact will be communicated to. It will show you the author. And then from here, you have the option to view steps if you want a little more information about what is in the smart plan. And from here, you can add the smart plan to your library. Or if you know that you want to set this up, you can just go ahead and click add smart plan right from here. So as you scroll down, you'll see that there's different categories. We have top rated, what's new. We do also have a search bar as well at the top. So you can search for a particular topic once you hit enter, you're going to get results that match what you've put in the search bar. And then you can go ahead and find which one works for you and add that to your smart plans library. So now we're going to go back to my smart plans. We're going to click on our first tab. This is going to bring us into our personal smart plans library. So these are all of the smart plans that we have either created or we have added from the public library for us to now be able to get our contacts on. So if we're looking at the header below, 
This is going to give an overview of all of the smart plans that we currently have. You can see if it is active with contacts on it by going under the contact column. And if we go down and find this eyeball icon with a number next to it, that's indicating that it's an active smart plan because there's one contact on it. If we wanted to add more contacts to that smart plan, we can go ahead and just click on the uh, add contact under our action column. The pencil icon will allow us to edit the smart plan. And our other button will allow us to copy the smart plan, publish it to the library, or to delete it from our smart plans. And just keep in mind that an active smart plan cannot be deleted, so you'd have to remove your contacts in order to delete it from your library. So the last option is going to be to uh, use the Create button in the top right corner. When you do that, it's going to open up the Smart Plan Editor, where it will have you create a smart plan from scratch. So I would definitely recommend going to the library first and utilizing smart plans that are already made. But if you do want to create your own, you have that option as well by clicking on the Create button. So next, let's go to referrals. So this is our referrals dashboard. So keep in mind the referrals dashboard is only for other Keller Williams agents. On our dashboard, you're going to have your referrals overview. It's going to tell you how you are doing with your referral business. And below that, it's going to tell you your referral network. So this is going to show you all of the agents that you have added to your network for you to be able to have quick access to sending them referrals. If you are looking to send out a new referral, you can do so by clicking on the new referral button in the top right corner. When you do that, you have two options of how you can send out a smart plan, or a smart plan, I'm sorry, uh, send out a referral. So you can either find an agent. If you click on this, it's going to bring you to the map for you to find a new agent that you have not connected with yet. Or you can select an agent from the dropdown. And this is going to allow you to search all of the agents that you have added to your referral network. Then you'll go ahead and you'll put in all of the referral information. You'll click send and it will send that referral for you. Up in the top right corner, top right, top left corner, we have a few tabs. So moving on from our dashboard, we have my referrals. If we click on this, it's going to provide all of your referral business. So you can, you can just keep an eye on what's going on with your business. Next, we have our map. So if we click on map, this is where you want to get started if you have not been in the referrals platform yet. So the map is going to allow you to see all of the KW agents, search for them, see their information, and either send a referral or add them to your referral network. So the first thing you see on this page is the search bar. You do have another box next to it that if you click on the dropdown, you have, you have various options of how you can search the map. So we're just gonna do it by production. You'll type in your area of where you're looking for an agent. You're going to see that as you start to zoom in, it's populating numbers and they do update as you zoom in. This is showing you the production of the agents. Oh, I think I scrolled in too much. There we go. Okay, there's our numbers. So on the right-hand side, we have our results column. So this is going to update as you move around on the map. And it's going to update with the agent's information of wherever your map is currently looking. If you wanted to filter out the information, you can click on the filter button in the top right. This is going to allow you to put in specific information based off of whatever you're looking for in a referral agent. 
So let's put in some information. We'll click apply filter. Filtered it too much. There we go. And it will update your results based off of that filter. From there, you can click on the agent. You can see their stats and their about me. And then the two icons to the right-hand side, one allows you to add them to your referral network. The other one will allow you to send a referral to them. All right, next we are gonna go to our opportunities. So this is our opportunities dashboard. Keep in mind that if you are on a team, it will auto default to your team profile in opportunities. So if you are putting opportunities in multiple, in both your team and your personal account, just make sure that you are under the right account before you start creating opportunities. So there's two ways to add opportunities in this section. You can either import by clicking on the import button here. This is going to allow you to import loops from dot loop. Or you can click on the create opportunity button right here. If you click on that, it's going to prompt you to put in all of your opportunity information. And remember, anything with the red star does mean that it is required in order to save the profile. You'll go ahead and click create and it will add that opportunity to your pipeline. So in looking at our dashboard, we have it, it we have our opportunities broken into different sections. So we have listings, buyers, and leases. Then we have some ratios, activity, and a list of closings for the month. So scrolling back up, we're going to look at our listings pipeline. You're going to see that it's broken up into various phases. It's going to tell you how many opportunities you have in that phase by this number below the icon. And then it's going to tell you your volume and the average time that you have contacts within this stage. Moving over to the right-hand side, we have a GCI column. So this is going to show you your potential and your probable income. And keep in mind that this is going to adjust based off of you moving opportunities throughout the pipeline. So in order to look at your actual pipeline, you can go ahead and click on an icon. From there, it's going to bring you into your board view where you're able to see all of your opportunities. You'll click on the active opportunity that you're looking to get more information on. From there, it's going to bring you inside the opportunity card where you can see all of the details. You can upload documents. You have your offers and commissions tab. You have notes and you have an overview of your timeline. All right, from there, we're gonna to go to our campaigns. So this is our campaigns dashboard. This is going to be all of your marketing communication. So on our dashboard, the best place to get started is the get started links in the right corner. This is where you're able to manage your paid ad channels, your social media channels, and you have a paid ad quick start. So essentially, these links are going to make sure that all of your platforms are set up correctly so that you are able to send out uh, campaigns. Scrolling down, we have some quick posts and we have some tips and training. If you are looking to create a campaign, you can click on the Create Campaign button in the top right corner. When you do that, you have four options. You can send out direct mail. You can send out email. You can send out a social post, which is a free post that will be sent out on your business profile, or you can send out a paid ad. This is paid by you through your business accounts, but it is to a targeted demographic. So you're going to choose the target demographic that you are looking for this paid ad to be sent out to. So you'll just click whichever one applies. 
it's going to bring you to the campaign editor where you can then create that campaign and send it out. So up at the top, we have a few tabs here. If we move on from our dashboard, we're gonna click on paid ads. This is going to show you your paid ads dashboard. You have your helpful links in the right corner again. Below that, you're able to manage your campaigns based off of the particular goal for that campaign. Then you have some education. And at the bottom, you have an overview of all of the paid ad campaigns that you have sent out. Next, we have emails. So this is going to keep track of all of your email campaigns that you have sent out. The top is going to show you your metrics. And then below that, it's an overview of all of the email campaigns that you have sent out or are in draft status. Next, we have direct mail. So this is exactly the same as email. Metrics at the top. Below is an overview of all of the direct mail campaigns that have been sent out. And lastly, we have our social posts. So this is where you're able to see live and scheduled social posts. So you can actually create social media posts directly on this page. And you can do that by just selecting the date of where you want to send out a social post. You'll click on this link, create a social post. You will then create the social post and have it either go out immediately or you can schedule it for a time in the future. Next, we're going to move towards the right-hand side, and we have our payments option. So if you click on this, this is just going to give you a back-end view of all of your marketing uh, spending metrics. Next, we're going to go to reports. So this is where you're able to find all of your reporting. On our dashboard, it's giving us an overview of our database health. So you're going to see metrics for that. It's going to tell you what information you should work on, work on getting to make these metrics a little bit better. Next, we have our sources. So you can see where all of your uh, contacts are coming from. Lastly, we have database activity score. So this is going to tell you how you're doing in terms of your communication with your contacts. Next, we have our reports tab. So this is going to provide different reports for you. If you click on your hyperlink right at the top, you have the option to choose either a database, a goals, or an opportunities report. Keep in mind the more information that you put into command, the more information you are going to receive out of these reports. So you'll get all of the information below. And then you do have an export button in the top right as well if you are looking to export this information. Next, we have our goals. So if we click on this, this is where you're able to set up your goal setting. You can do that in the top right corner by clicking on goal setting. It's going to redirect you to a page where you will go ahead and set that up. Once, that's set, once that is set up and you have uh, been putting information into your command profile, you're going to start seeing some information populate here, telling you how you are doing uh, in terms of the goals that you have set. Next, we have lead routing. So I'm not going to click on this one because it doesn't pertain to a majority of us. However, if you are a Rainmaker on a team, you should see this lead routing tab. What this is, is it gives you the ability to create specific lead routes so that when leads come into your command, they're being dispersed in a particular way to your team members. So you can set all of that up under this tab here. Next, we have our emails. This is going to tell you how your emails are doing. And lastly, we have texts and calls, and this is going to be based off of your Twilio account. So if you have not set up a Twilio account, um, you will not get any information out of this. But if you do have a Twilio account, you'll start to see some information populate here. 
Next, we have designs. So this is your designs homepage. So this is all of the designs that you are currently working with that are gonna show up here. Then you have two ways of adding designs. You can either import a design. So if you click on that, it's going to prompt you to upload a file from your computer. So if you have created a design in a third party such as Canva, you can import the design here. You can also create a design through the design editor. So if you click on that button, it's going to bring you into the design editor where you can find all of the pre-made templates and ready to go, um, ready to go templates where you can just plug and play your information into it. So I would definitely check out the design center here. Next, we have our listings. So this is how you are able to connect your MLS to your command profile. You can do that by clicking on Sync My MLS right here. When you do that, you're going to put in either your listing address or your MLS number. You'll go ahead and click Next. It's going to populate information and you're going to find the listing. You'll click Select in the top right corner. Click Next. And then it's going to have this pop-up that's going to have you confirm whether you're the primary or the co-listing agent. So you'll pick whichever one applies for that particular listing. It's then going to send you a verification email on file to the email that is connected to that listing within the MLS. Once you verify that it is in fact your listing, it will connect the two together so your listings will start to auto-populate into this listing section here. So once you do have all of that information under here, you are able to have your listing information uh, automatically update into your marketing, your designs, et cetera, so you don't have to manually put that information in. The last thing that we have is our consumer app. So again, this is where you are able to see all of your website and your KW app information. So I'm actually gonna skip ahead to the next tab over. If we click on testimonials, this is gonna provide a list of all of the testimonials that have come in through the website. Our next tab is collections. So on this, uh, on this page, you are able to set up a collection. And you can do that by clicking on the Create a Collection button here. And what a collection is, it is allows you to put in specific property information that a client is interested in. And then you can start pushing those listings out to your contact. If we go back to my website, we're gonna scroll down just a second and come back up to the top later. So a little bit down, you're going to see my website settings. The first thing you're going to see is your KW URL. So this is your personal URL that if you go to this URL, it's going to bring you to your KW website. Next, you have your app URL. Make sure that you copy this and this is the URL that you are marketing out on your social media, in emails, to clients, all of that. The reason being is you want your contacts to register for the KW app under your specific app URL. The reason you want them to do that is because once they have registered under your specific URL, you then have Big Brother access to seeing what they are doing, but also you are branded on their app as their agent. Next, you have some preferences. So you can either enable or disable the questions here, followed by forced registration. So you can choose whether you want uh, someone to have to register for your website, and you can update that information here. We're going to scroll back up to the top, and now we're going to click on Edit My Website. So I'm not going to go too much into this because this is, it gets a little tricky. <laughs> I'm not going to lie. 
But if we're looking at the top, again, we have our hyperlinked website URL right here. We have our quick start options where you can quickly click on any of these to create the different topic. Below that, we have the option to edit our website. So you're going to see all of your current default pages that are listed on your website. And you can also see any custom pages that have been set up. If we go to click on one of the pages, it is going to open up this page that you see here. On the left-hand side, you can see all of the different areas that are within this particular page of your website. And in the middle section, you can see in real time what your website looks like. So if we wanted to click on featured testimonials, we're seeing that this is the third space down. This is going to allow you to update all of that information that is under testimonials. Once you have made all of those changes, you'll just go ahead and click save, and it's going to save all of that information for you. All right, so that's everything that we have today for our command overview class. Thank you all so much for joining me today, and we will see you next time.